the list. The second one that's useful is SQL Compare, and that's um, this one, SQL Compare Pro right here, allows us to compare and synchronize database schema changes. So again, I'm switching topics. This is a whole new tool. This tool is super useful. It will compare two databases, and it will show us the difference between those two databases. So if I type in, um, in Windows, just SQL Compare, right, I'll find SQL Compare 11, which is the one I'm showing you right now, that blue envelope. I don't know why the compare is a blue envelope. It's kind of weird. OK, don't worry too much about the screen. There's some power in the screen, but I'll show you the screen a little bit later. Really, I'm just going to compare. Maybe this is my dev server, and this is staging, or this is my staging server, and this is production. And all I want to do is see the differences between two databases. So in my case, I'm going to look at the difference between the T-SQL 2012 database and the T-SQL 2012 new database. And now I'm going to compare now. And it's going to look at all the schema between those two databases, and it's going to show me the differences. And here, it says one object exists in both but is different, one object that only exists in one, and then 48 identical objects. Well, let's look at the identical objects, right? Right away, we see these objects are the same. So SQL Compare is not going to do anything different between these objects. If I say, oh, which one exists in T-SQL but doesn't exist in T-SQL new, it says there's a table called, uh, or a procedure called select T1, and that doesn't exist. And I say, OK, I definitely want that to exist in T-SQL 2012 new. And then if I click here and it says, oh, we've got a customer's table, and it looks like in here the column is called company name, but here the column is called C name, there's a difference there. And it looks like there's a data type difference. Here the data type is 40, and here the data type is 100. So that difference needs to be accounted for. In addition, it looks like the, that, that might you know, ripple out to a clustered index change, too. OK, so I do want that change to appear, too. So I click that um, change also. So that's two changes. One, a table change. And remember, tables have state in them. And two, a stored procedure change, which has no state. We're just going to overwrite it. Whatever the definition is in w the left database, we're going to overwrite in the right database. And then we're going to click Deployment Wizard. And here we can say, yeah, let's go ahead and create a deployment script. And um, we can back up the target before deployment if we want, but we're not going to do that. It takes too long. Then it says, hey, I noticed that you're changing a couple of things. There are some dependencies you should be aware of. These are the foreign key tables that you might be affecting. You might be want to be aware of that. And click Next. And then it says, hey, there's no default value for the column. Are you sure about this? And I'll say, yeah, that's fine. Now, what I just clicked was Open Script in SSMS. And what that did, and you can't see that because um, it's in my other window, but I'll drag it over. It opened up SSMS here, and it shows me the compare script. So SQL Compare, this tool, created this script. And this script's goal, right, is to make this database, the T-SQL 2012 database, um, synchronized with this database, right? And that means they can drop objects, it can add objects, it can modify, it can add indexes, it can add statistics, it can do a lot of things. It can add different database options. I mean, it will compare everything about that database, including permissions if necessary, right? You can see that over here, like users right here, right? OK, so if we look at the script, we know that Look, it had to drop some foreign keys, right, because it's going to modify the table. And then um, it dropped some indexes. So this is pretty invasive here. It can be very invasive. And then it created this procedure, right? So it must have dropped it before that. Where, where's the drop proc? There's a drop index. There's an alter table drop constraint. I don't know. I'm sure it's up there. We don't need to go look through everything. But um, OK, so it's going to, oh, no, it actually. No, I don't know. Oh, you know what? It didn't need to alter anything. Remember, it didn't exist in the destination. So there was no drop because this select T1 procedure wasn't in the other one already. So it could just create it no matter what. And then here, what it did was it created a table. And the create table, um, did they want no, having some issues? OK. OK. Um, so they're creating a table, but look, this was my customer's table. And they're creating a table not named customers right here, right? 
And it's the same schema definition as the customers table. And then what they're doing is they're saying, please take all the customers and insert them into that temporary table that they created. And then once they've done that, then what they're doing is they're adding a bunch of stuff to the temporary table, right? And then they're going to rename that temporary table. Um, where's the rename? Let's see. Oh, here it is. They're going to rename. They're going to drop the original table, and then rename the temporary table into the new table. So that's a lot of code here. You can see that um, schema compare, SQL compare, you know, wrote 179 lines of pretty durable code code where it's going to log for you and it's going to show you what it's doing and it's going to have um, you know transactions when necessary you can see the begin trend here right so there are a lot of things that you could do here now if I were really going to come back here to this tool if I were really going to take T SQL 2012 as a dev database and promote it to production you can see that this script can now become part of your code base right you can check this script into source control and you can say this is the script I use to deploy my product into production. And now that script becomes a, an artifact of your deployment. So you have a great opportunity to self-document what you did in order to keep production current with your development efforts, right? Also, this script can get executed on a command line. So you can play with this script in development and staging and maybe a pre-production environment. And then when the time comes to go to production, you could hand the script to a DBA and say, this is the script I want you to run, and I know it works because I tested it in a pre-production environment, right? Um, another thing about the tool is you don't have to do everything. You can pick and choose exactly what you want in the script. You can filter by schema if you like. You can do a subset of any of your changes. The script also, when it when you use Deployment Wizard, it checks for dependencies, and you saw that, right? You saw, oh, wait, there's some foreign keys that we're going to need to modify um, before we can touch the primary table, the parent table. So it does do dependency checking so that objects are scripted in the correct order for updates. And then finally, a feature that you should use, I think, is if you click on Tools, you can generate a comparison report right here. And you can say, please make this interactive HTML and show me all the objects selected for synchronization. And if you click on generate, it generates this report. And you can't see it because, again, it's on my other window. Let me bring it over to you. It creates this HTML report that you can save off. And you can say, look, when I created this, I updated customers. And the syntax it was going to use to make that update is down here. And then I'm, I was going to create this stored procedure, like I told you I would, right? So, so you can use the script as an artifact, but you can also use this HTML report as a more graphical artifact to say exactly what you did, um, just so that you have some type of lineage in your updates when you deploy things to production in SQL. Is this interesting, you guys? I hope you guys are interested. Well, SQL compare, and you can take what you've just learned, in SQL, and it's the same type of thing. Oh, you know what? Can we hold for a second? I meant to show you, now that I see this screen, I meant to show you something. In SQL Compare, when you have um, when you have a new comparison, you can pull schema out of a backup file, a BAK file. So I don't know why you'd want to do that for schema unless you lost schema from you know somebody messed around with your schema and you've got an old backup where you know the schema is correct, like you lost a store procedure or something like that. But where that idea of pulling something out of a backup file is very powerful is in data compare. Because you can imagine if somebody deleted a lookup table or they deleted a row and you need to get that particular row back, you can pull a data comparison out of a BAK and grab that row and bring it to production. So, so what you're seeing now that you can do from database to database, you can also do from a backup file or directly from source control, which will make more sense when we talk about SQL source control in just a minute. So let's do a data compare. So again, I'm going to compare the T-SQL 2012 database. And I'm going to go to the T-SQL 2012 new database. And I'm going to click Compare Now. And just like 
What SQL Compare does for DDL or data definition language like Create Table, Procedure, Create View, um, SQL Data Compare does for DML, Insert, Update, and Delete. And it says, look, 11 tables are identical. They have all the same stuff. But this one table, T1, is different. And it says, look, I've found three rows in the source that doesn't exist in the other one. Um, do you want them? And you can do the same thing. You can do a deployment wizard. Oh, you know what? what's interesting about this is actually I think they exist in the destination and they don't exist in the source. So let's just see about that. We can click Next. And if we come here, yeah, we get a delete, right? So maybe we don't want the delete. It, maybe this time we've got data in the production that we want to go back to development. And if that's true, um, what we can do is um, switch deployment direction. And when we switch deployment direction and click Deployment Wizard, now we're going to go put the, that data back into T-SQL 2012. Then you can tell that because the script has these inserts here instead of the deletes. Pretty cool, huh? So, so everything that you learned in um, Schema Compare, you can apply to Data Compare, including you know um, export the comparison results. You can um, save the script off. You can pull directly from a BAK file. Like I said, if somebody deletes a row, you can get it back. Pretty, pretty powerful.